we'll start with Phil Camo. Please tell us in your beautiful language the actual correct pronunciation of your film, please. In French, it's called Belle Ile en Acadie. It's actually almost the same. It's just the in that becomes un. un. So uh, Belle Ile en Acadie. How do people in Belle Ile en Mer feel? Do they feel Acadian in any way? In, in their language, in their, um, other than their history, do they have a, a sentiment d'Acadianité? The music, uh, some of the meals, uh, the way that people are. So yes, there is, there is a, uh, a cultural uh, similarity, identity. And, and the young people also say they are of Acadian descent, which, is, which is, makes you realize that, yes, uh, if the kids say that, if the young people say that, then there's, you know, there's, there's a connection to us over here in North America. How about English speaking uh, Acadian? It's a bit like in Louisiana. In Louisiana, there's over a million Cajun, Cajuns in Louisiana, but there's only 200,000 who speak French anymore, but they still call themselves Cajuns. So that's part of your answer. It's the same Acadian Cajun. They just re remove the A, so Acadian Cajun. Yes, you can be Cajun. You, you, you can be Acadian and, and speak English uh, uh, as long as you feel part of it. That's basically what culture is. It's if you can identify yourself to a culture, whether it's the music, the food, the way the people are, uh, if you can identify to elements, then you can, be, you can, obviously you're an Acadian if you identify to it. That's how culture works, you know? Phil, I just have an anecdotal um, experience that I had. I've been to the Louisiana about 22 times and I used to travel miles and miles to go to this small area. I think it was around, uh, what well, my pronunciation is going to be terrible, but Grosco? Grosco? Yeah, Grosco. And there was a uh, chef Grosco. there named Paul Camo. Yes, And I used to travel like crazy all the time to go see him and oh, yes. eat a tiny little restaurant. And one day I was there with a French uh, friend of mine, uh, French from France, and I had never before heard the service speak, the people who were serving the tables speak. And it was shocking because I said, I feel like I'm in Louisiana right now. Listen to the patois that they're speaking. And yeah. when they were speaking amongst themselves, they sounded just like they were in Louisiana. And then when they came over to the table, they sounded almost uh, French or French Canadian. Depending on where I'm traveling, I have a standard French. And when I'm with my friends, I, sp I speak Acadian. Uh, Acadian, when I was 16 years old, I was fascinated by language and French words. I, 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 I did a dictionary with a thousand words, French words that we would use that weren't in the dictionary that the academy the french academy of, of france never accepted you know in their dictionary and i was really proud of it published it and a few years later somebody a, a real linguist because i wasn't a linguist uh, a real linguist passed behind me and found three thousand words acadian words who aren't in the french dictionary so obviously we we have new, different words which are the old words of the 1700s 1600s even uh, but we also have different expressions uh, from Quebecers, for example. We also have different pronunciations. Um, so obviously I, I, I adapt to wherever I am. Is the Canadian government or even the Nova Scotia government helping you? In, because as far as I'm concerned, your film, it should be part of Canada's uh, foreign affairs information circuit. Um, have you had any help from the federal or provincial governments to get this film out there and really help you with uh, people in France who tend to have more of a Quebec tendency when it comes to uh, visualizing Canada? That's what I'm trying to do is to get to Acadian culture to get known, but all at the same time, I'm a filmmaker. I like to tell good stories and I like to uh, find emotion in, in situations. And, and in this case, in this film, I thought it was a perfect opportunity because these were people who had not, most of them who had never been to their ancestors' home. And also what's fantastic about that is that they consider their homeland to be Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. But we all know that four centuries ago, they were, we were all from France, the Acadians. We we're all from France. That's when we think of where we're from, we think of France. But the Acadians in Belle Ile, when they think where they're from, they think it's here which is bizarre because Canada is a much younger country, you know? So I thought that was fascinating. And, and so some of them were coming to their 
homeland for the first time in their lives, who'd been hearing about it forever, including, as you've seen, a few young people. And uh, they couldn't wait to get here. And obviously, when they were walking on the lands of their ancestors, they were getting chills. And, and yeah, so I, it, it, it was... It was good. It was it was a good experience. It was really touching, even us, even for us, for the crew, to witness that, to to see how collective identity or 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 or, or the need to know where you're from can be strong in people. It's 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 fascinating. I, that's basically what fascinated me. It's part of the team of the of the film is why or how can people after so long still wish to see their homeland, you know? Was there ever a database established for um, orphanages that are connecting people back even though it was so f long ago? In those days, uh, we're talking 1755, so um, the orphanages, I'm not aware of, of any, um, you know, when, I can imagine when you're refugees in those days, if you had children arriving uh, beside their name, I'm not even sure the children know what their family name was. You know, uh, I, I, I've never heard of uh, uh, registers uh, of orphanages of Acadians when they ar I arrived either in the US or, uh, or in, well, the American colonies then, or in France or in England or, you know, um, but it would be interesting to know. That said, even if you found them, would the children, would it have been marked whose children they were? I don't know. Well, you know, uh, there's, there's, uh, it was really bad uh, being deported in those days. You were thrown in the bottom of a ship and uh, with the rats and not much to eat. And once you arrived, if you had survived, you were dispatched to different areas so that they wouldn't be able to get together um it was it wasn't uh it wasn't like refugees today who come to canada and they mm -hmm. register and they you know uh so i think it would be hard if somebody thinks their ancestor was an orphan for them to know whose parents of the orphan were they were i think well, mm -hmm. I, if i may jump in i, I know there are the very good registers that were held by the church and for instance, there is a surname in Acadia, the Miquelon. Uh, there's a number of people who have the name Miquelon. In fact, they're all descendants of a Saint-Cyr who was orphaned and was taken in by a, a priest in Miquelon and gave them the surname Miquelon. So I think there, 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 is, there isn't a database, but there is a, a very good registry uh, that was kept by the church over the, okay. over the centuries. Now, we do know that some places the registers were lost. But I have to be honest with you, doing my Acadian ancestry was a lot easier than doing my Irish ancestry. I wonder about the slaves. So in fact, I read, and, and you sort of touched on it, that in Virginia, that uh, they were prisoners. But in fact, I read, and I don't remember what the source was, but that a number of the Acadians then became slaves. It was a, a funny time because obviously they were starving, they had to eat uh, and to be able to eat. So did they go, did they offer themselves to work in the fields because there were no jobs, because they were refugees, because they didn't speak the language, because they weren't of the same religion, et cetera, et cetera? Mm -hmm. or, or were they taken? I don't know. Um, but there are uh, uh, there are cases of, of, of Acadians working in cotton fields with with the Black Americans, uh, and um, yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, in those times, it wasn't it wasn't the best of of past in terms of economics to be able to to feed your family and to whatnot to be able to survive um, uh, through all of that uh, chaos. Yeah. How big was the group that came from Belle Ile Mer to uh, Nova Scotia uh, during the filming? I, I'm just eyeballing based on my memory. Was it 20, 30 people? Yes. How big was uh, this group? 20. Okay. Yeah. So it was a small group, um, but it obviously it's very expensive. <laughs> you have to take a ship off the, uh, go to Paris, take a flight, go to Montreal, Montreal to Moncton, uh, and then rent. Uh, yeah. And also because they were traveling all around, so uh, obviously that that meant you know renting a lot of different hotels, different places, traveling, 
because they did the whole Maritimes. They went from Cape Britain to the southern, southwestern Nova Scotia to New Brunswick to PEI. So, so obviously it cost them a lot. Um, oh, okay. So I was I was happy, and and because yeah. I've been a, uh, quite a few times at Belle Isle, and because I also knew the president uh, Marivan, who was the first one who speaks in the film, and we see a few times in the film, because she's the president of the association over there, she was able to send me the entire list. So I, I communicated with all of them. Actually, I knew already half of them, which is amazing, uh, because obviously they're very active. So every time I go to Billy Lamer, I, I will meet them or I will see them or uh, there's an activity and I will uh, get to know them. So, so uh, yeah, it was, but more than 20 would have been difficult to film. <laughs> Oh, no, That's a lot of people. To... I understand. Uh, yeah. Back to Belle Ile Mer, and then I'll be, that'll be my last question. Uh, like I've never been to Belle Ile Mer, I'll be honest with you. Uh, what kind of economy do they have? Uh, obviously, these are not people who, uh, um, who are Parisians or Bordelais or from Nantes. Like, what is the economy in, in Belle Ile Mer? Is it, is it similar to what you would find in Acadia? What kind of, uh, are they into oh, tourism? Think... Yes, at the moment, uh, the biggest industry is tourism because obviously it, uh, the name is Belle la Mer. Belle means beautiful, and it's to to me the most beautiful island in in uh, in France near the metropolitan. Obviously, after after Saint Pierre Miquelon, of course. Uh, that's right, <laughs> but uh, it's it's beautiful. It's surrounded by by um, cliffs, and there's like fifty beaches. Obviously, beaches bring tourists. Uh, there's wonderful food. There's a uh, uh, so it used to be fishing and agriculture. Obviously, over the years, they realized that they were living on a rock. They switched more to fishing, and obviously, the fishing sort of went down because the big metropolitan ships who mm -hmm. come around with factory ships sort of depleted the oceans. So the fishing isn't uh, that good anymore. There's still fishermen, but not that much. Uh, so tourism is a big thing. You've won up to 47 awards, so that's in a lot of different countries. What is it about your film and Acadians that is touching people all over the world? I think uh, not many people know about Acadians, so obviously it's new for them. Uh, that's one of them. Uh, the other one is probably because the story is so actual and it's in a strange way when you relate to refugees all over the world. And every country also has minorities. In this case, these guys, the, the, these Acadians, they're they're really proud of who they are, and they, they practice their culture, and they and they tell their kids, you know, uh, Acadian history is not taught in the schools in France, but on Belle Isle they do. The first time it won an award in Asia, I, I was like, how is that possible, you know? Because it's so different. It's the cultures over the culture over there is so different from. European or North American culture, and I, and I thought, well, why not? Why not? I, I enjoy watching Asian films. I enjoy watching uh, uh, Latino films, etc. So, yeah, there's uh, there's there's people who are interested in knowing more about the world out there. So so uh, it makes me want to do more movies.